Hello, my name is Allison Anderson. I'm an instructor here at UConn University. And today we're going to be doing this math problem. How long will it take to fill an empty tank that is 6 meters wide, 12 meters long, and 4 meters deep with a pump that delivers water at 15 liters per second? And we want our answer in hours. So we know that our tank is 6 meters wide, 12 meters long, 4 meters deep, and then we're filling it at a flow rate of 15 liters per second. So I like to do math problems by drawing it out, help me better understand what it's asking me. So we've got a tank, it has a width, a length, and a depth, so that sounds like a rectangular tank to me. 12 meters long, 6 meters wide. So I'll do my best to draw this out here. 6 meters wide, 12 meters long, 4 meters deep. Now we're filling it with a pump. At 15 liters a second. And the answer is asking, or the question is asking us, how long will it take to fill? So our answer is going to be some amount of time in hours. How long does it take to fill this tank at 15 liters per second? So looking at your formula sheet, we have a formula that is detention time. equals volume over flow. Now we're not exactly calculating detention time in this question. Detention time is how long volume stays in the tank when it's draining. But we can use this formula for this question because it's kind of the same principle. How long does it take to fill the tank at a given flow rate? and a given volume, what is the time going to be? So this is the formula that I'm going to use. So I need a volume and a flow to use in this formula. I do have a flow, 15 liters a second. What is the volume? So I have to calculate that. I have to calculate the volume of this rectangular tank. So the formula for that, from the formula sheet, is volume is length times width times height. Now this is how it's written on the formula sheet. They don't write the multiplication symbols here, but when you've got terms like that right next to each other, they're being multiplied. So I could rewrite this volume, length times width times height. So here, this is my height, this is my length, and this is my width. I'm going to check my units. Meters, meters, meters. Everything's in meters, so I can multiply those by each other. That's great. So I can go ahead and put these numbers into my formula to solve for the volume. So length, uh, sorry, 12 meters. Can I just go back to... Okay, so length, 12 meters, times width, 6 meters, times height, 4 meters. Pull out my calculator, just like you would on your exam. 12 times 6 times 4, so I get 288. Now I'm also going to suggest that you do all your calculations at least twice in your calculator to make sure you don't make a mistake. So I'll do that too. 12 times 6 times 4, and I get 288. The units here 
I've got meters times meters times meters, three meters, meters cubed. So now I know my volume that I can use in this formula. And I've got a flow rate. So my flow is 15 liters per second. But I've got liters here as my volume unit within this flow rate, liters, and here I've got meters cubed. So I can't throw these into my formula just yet. So I'm gonna have to convert either this to meters per second, meters cubed per second, or this to liters. I'm thinking the easier to convert this to liters, so that's what I'm going to do. So I calculated my volume in cubic meters. I'm going to convert that to liters so that I can use it in my formula. I know that one cubic meter is a thousand liters. So I'm going to multiply this answer by a thousand to get that in liters. Great. And if you want more information on how to do unit conversions, there are other videos that show that and you can click the link in the description to see those. Okay, so now my formula, volume over flow, I have volume in liters, I've got a flow in liters per second. So liters and liters, I can use that in my formula. So time equals my volume over my flow rate. So on my calculator, I will go 288,000 divided by 15, and I get 19,200. Now for units here, I have liters and liters here, which is great because they cancel. And I'm left with seconds on the bottom of a fraction, on the bottom of a fraction. And so when that happens, the seconds can come up. So my time in seconds, 19,200. But the question wants the answer in hours. How many seconds in an hour? Thirty six hundred seconds. So one hour is thirty six hundred seconds. So I can take my answer in seconds and divide that by thirty six hundred. Again, if you want more information on doing unit conversions, lots of other videos are available on that topic. So nineteen thousand two hundred divided by thirty six hundred. I get 5.3. And that is my final answer.